So here's a scenario, you're roasting, you want to get married and avoid haram, but you can't afford the mahar, the wedding, let alone the living expenses. The solution, have a no strings nikah, where you can be Islamically married, do your activities, but owe your wife none of the rights she would usually get, like spending on her, sheltering her, clothing her, that kind of stuff. The question is, is this a solution? or a nightmare waiting to happen. This topic comes up a lot because a lot of young Muslim men, they want to get married and they want to get married quickly to avoid haram that they might fall into in their younger years. The problem is maybe you're still in full-time education. Maybe you can't get a job or maybe the job you have doesn't earn you enough. So you can't get married the usual way. So this solution of no strings nikah has been proposed. Is it a good idea? So here are a few of my thoughts on this concept of no strings nikah or whatever it's been called in the past because it has been used in the past. The first is that this woman that you might marry, she's not going to be your ideal wife. That's the reason she's accepting to give up her rights and you're accepting to marry someone maybe unideal. Maybe the ideal woman you would marry is going to be much younger, not have kids, not have been married before, etc, etc. But you're accepting this compromise just to fulfill your desires basically. The point is this woman you'll marry through this means and there probably aren't many who are willing to do this anyway. This woman she would not be your ideal wife that you would want to get married to and stay married to and have children with for the rest of your life. The problem with this is that if you're marrying this first one and later you want to marry the second one there is a culture that we have unfortunately where we don't accept polygyny a lot. Women even their fathers they're probably not going to accept it. So what does that mean when you want to marry the second wife? Either the first one won't be happy with it or the second one won't accept it. So you might end up just staying married to this unideal wife. The second option is that you divorce the first wife and you go on to marry a more ideal wife later on. The problem with this is you're kind of getting married. Deep down you'll know the truth but you're kind of getting married with the intention that realistically yes I'm going to divorce this first wife and that's not a good intention to go into a marriage with that I'm actually going to marry this woman but I know down the line when I get my finances up when I'm more attractive more desirable as a husband I'm gonna then go and marry the person I actually want to marry and I'm gonna divorce this one that is the wrong intention and that could even make the marriage contract invalid so the first problem I have is what's the end game with this if you're marrying someone that you're accepting is quite a big compromise if that's the case then you know that down the line there are going to be problems around marrying someone you actually want to marry and the whole polygyny issue. Now the second point is I know it's difficult out there. I wanted to get married for nine years before I actually got married and women today seem to be better than ever at beautifying themselves outside. And so living in that environment day after day after day it really pulls at you and you just want to have a halal way to express yourself. Having said that, we must understand that marriage is not about just fulfilling your desires. That is one of the reasons. The other reason, which I would say this is the headline, this is the title of marriage and should be at the forefront of your mind when getting married, is that I am starting a family. That's how you should be thinking about it when you're going into marriage. Not I'm going to have an outlet for my desires, but the main number one thing is I'm starting a family. Number two, maybe number three, maybe number four is going to be, yes, I have a, that halal outlet. And what does starting a family mean? It means having a wife that you're going to lead, you're going to take care of, you're going to develop and help her reach Jannah and have success in whatever she does in this life. It means you're going to have children, you're going to raise them and be leaders for them and give them terbiyah and raise them to be renewers, revivers of the Ummah of the Prophet ﷺ. And it means you're going to have parents-in-law, sister-in-law, brother-in-law. This is a way that you're spreading your network and that's a beautiful thing and it's something you can benefit from as well. So this is what I mean by starting a family and if you go into a no strings nikah marriage is that really at the forefront of your mind? Probably not. So I think that's a losing formula for actually building strong families to revive the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ. Think about it, if you're marrying someone so that you can fulfill your desires in a halal way, maybe you're not going to have kids with her, maybe you're going to divorce her down the line, maybe it, the compatibility is not even there versus marrying someone that you think this is a great wife for me, she's going to be a great mother for my children, I'm going to take care of her and develop her, I'm going to develop the kids and we're going to be together inshallah for our whole lives developing ourselves and I'm the leader of this family unit, we develop our own culture, we have our own standards and we're going great places inshallah. Which of those two situations is going to be the best for ourselves, for our society and for the ummah at large? And my last thought on this is that a lot of good women simply won't accept to do this.
No doubt some good women will, yes, but the average good Muslima values herself more than to trade herself out and give up her rights for what? To help you fulfill your desires? Ask yourself, if you were a father to daughters, would you be happy with her marrying someone, giving up her rights so that he can fulfill his desires? You would value your daughter more than that and she would probably value herself as well more than that. So by going down this route, you're accepting that I'm going to marry someone who is of a lower standard. It's not preferable, it's not ideal. And you're cutting yourself off from the 90% of girls that you would be interested in marrying and settling down with and really building that strong family unit with. So here is my proposal. Go to that girl that you actually would like to marry and build a family with. Go to her with a plan, with maybe a part-time job, and propose. See what happens. There will be some who are okay with it. Is it common that they'll accept this? No. Is this method going to include some rejection? Yes. But if you try to fulfill her rights and you come with a plan and one of them accepts you when you're not at your most attractive ideal stage in life, then you've probably found yourself a really good wife and a really good father-in-law. And that will set you up solidly for the future. And just on a side note to end the video, what happened to us having duties, roles, responsibilities and being proud of them? Now it seems a lot of people, they just want to drop their responsibilities, their duties as soon as there's a way out for them. No, come on, man up. Take your responsibilities, take pride in them. These things aren't burdens that we should want to get rid of. These are things that we should take as a challenge. We should meet head on. We should trust in Allah to help us through them if we have the right intention. And we should take pride in the fact that this is my role in life. This is my responsibility. I'm going to work towards it. So I would say get rid of this Uber Eats mentality around your duties. Take on your duties head on. And I know it's difficult, but try your best. Trust in Allah and you'll never know what doors Allah will open for you. So like I said, if you think of this no strings nikah setup, it's not something that's going to create strong families. It's not something that's going to be a long term solution. It's a short term solution that comes with long term consequences that you might not like in the end. So instead of going down that route, I would take on my duties, my responsibilities, trust in Allah, come up with a plan for myself for the next three to five years, come up with a part time job or some sort of income, even if I'm in education full time, and I would trust Allah and go forward inshallah. I'm sure I'll get your feedback, your input in the comments, whether you agree or disagree. This channel is dedicated to Muslim men, helping us out, thinking through solutions, thinking through issues that we face. If you're interested in that, then of course you can subscribe. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.